There are some issues in media that get a lot of attention, and you scratch your head and say, ah, that probably doesn't need that much attention. And then along comes a story that gets a lot of attention, and you realize that this is a big enough story that it deserves the attention it's getting and probably more. And when I was reading last week, a story broke that there's a group in northern Idaho, and they're looking to do this statewide. What they're doing is collecting signatures on a petition. Uh, The group is called Abolish Abortion Idaho, and the goal is to create a ballot measure which would allow the people of this state, yes or no, to vote about a ban on abortion in Idaho. And uh, it's gotten a lot of attention. I've especially seen it coming from the opposition, who, of course, support this abhorrent practice. Uh, they, uh, They are gearing up, obviously, because they fear that it could change things in this state to the point where I guess they'd all have to leave for California. In the meantime, we're joined this morning by Scott Herndon. He is with Abolish Abortion Idaho. It's 907. It's 37 right now on Top Story on KLIX. And first of all, Scott, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me, Bill. I appreciate that. How many signatures do you actually need to get a measure on the ballot statewide? It is 6% of the number of registered voters from the last general election, which for us now is 56,192, but there's an additional requirement to get 6% of the registered voters in 18 of Idaho's 35 legislative districts. So we have to get one more than half. That way it shows that you've got widespread support for the measure you're trying to pass. So far, I understand you've had pretty good reaction in in the northern part of the state, uh, that you've been passing these in the panhandle. Uh, Is there a a specific number you know that you have roughly right now? I I know for a fact it actually takes a while to get the ballot out there and get people circulating it and then actually get them back. I do know that we have way more than a 1,000 signatures, but I don't know how many because I've been told by several people that they've got multiple signature sheets filled, but they haven't mailed them to us yet. So it's hard to say at this point. We have 15 months in to get the remaining signatures required, and you always have to overshoot by about 40 percent. The reason is, is they have to be Idaho registered voters, and you actually in Idaho have to have your address on your signature sheet match your registration address. So it's kind of particular here in Idaho. And, and for, for people who are doing this, obviously, when you mentioned the legislative districts, you need people then fanning out throughout the state because it's not just one number. You've got to get two sets of numbers. So you need volunteers everywhere. We do, and that's why it's great that you can just download the petition right at our website, abolishabortionid.com, and then any Idaho resident over the age of 18 can circulate the petition, and all the instructions are on the website, and of course, many hands make lighter work. You know, referencing that website, uh, I think a lot of people out there have obvious access to computers in this day and age. Uh, If they go there and they do this, you, you could likely at least get a lot of people who are involved, let's say, in local churches who might be willing to get behind it. I don't know how much how many pastors are willing to get behind it because there's always that concern about the Johnson Amendment and the like. But I would I would guess that just through those networks, you're already getting the word around. That is right. We actually have a couple of ministerial associations in a couple of different cities that are involved, and so they're helping to circulate the petition. And then just to be clear, as far as church involvement or any 501c3 being involved, the IRS only has restrictions on campaigning for candidates. They actually will allow churches to use up to 50% of their budget on ballot initiatives. And we have that answer on our website on the frequently asked questions. It's actually a tiered system by which the IRS says you cannot have a substantial amount of what you're doing to support political campaigns that have nothing to do with candidates. So there is that fine line partition, but churches can totally embrace this and actually speak to it from the pulpit and get heavily involved, or any other 501c3, because we're clearly not just targeting Christians, because there are a lot of people in the state of Idaho who think abortion is an abhorrent practice and should be outlawed. Right. You don't have to have people who go to church every Sunday, and you can have people from other religious faiths, I'm sure, who are on board with the notion that this has to be brought to an end. Exactly. In fact, there are even some atheists who believe that abortion should be ended. So we welcome, obviously, this is a 
petition for all Idaho residents and all Idaho registered voters. And so we really want to try to reach out to every possible group that we can and get them involved. And like I say, if they would circulate it amongst their friends, family, and political and church groups and any other group they have, we could probably get the signatures fairly quickly. Statistically, we definitely have enough people in the state of Idaho to get this on the ballot who agree that abortion should always be outlawed. So we just need to reach those people to get it onto the ballot. It would be helpful, though, if you could perhaps uh, get the, the Roman Catholic bishop as well as maybe the LDS church on board, because just those two denominations, I would think, could result in more than enough signatures around the state, and they have the reach, if you will, in all of these legislative districts. Yes, yeah, statistically, both of those denominations represent about 360,000, I believe, at least, Idahoans. And so we do want to get them involved. Now, I do want to speak to a couple of what some of their concerns will be in the Roman Catholic denominations. And that would be that traditionally in the pro-life movement, they have not wanted to punish women. They have tried to paint women as the victims of abortion. And just like any other murder for hire, if a woman hires an assassin to kill her husband, this petition, right now, believe it or not, in Idaho Code, we define murder to include the preborn embryos and fetuses. That's Idaho Code 18-4001. And then we don't say abortion is not murder. We actually just prohibit prosecution for murder. So this initiative petition, all it's doing is removing the prohibition for prosecution, and then it better defines abortion and how you can end up killing a preborn person in abortion. And so some of the Roman Catholics concerns or some others, even in some right to life groups, they don't like the idea of punishing women. But I'd like to point out that we are not punishing any women retroactively. It would be enforced from the moment that it's passed. In other words, there will be a future effective date. There's never according to the Constitution ex post facto law, which punishes retroactively. So everybody would know that it's now illegal. All the abortion clinics, like in Twin Falls and Meridian, would shut down. You could not get a legal abortion in Idaho. And then that would pretty much end up closing down abortion in Idaho. And there would probably not be a lot of women knowing it's a potential murder penalty with serious consequences that would go do it. So that's how I'd like to speak to those Roman Catholics that are concerned about punishing women or any right to lifers are. Our goal is not to punish women. Of course, if women go get an illegal abortion and a prosecutor wants to charge them, they will be punished. And they should be, because abortion is murder. But when people know things are murder, they don't tend to go out and commit murder. So that's why currently in Idaho we only have about 25 murders a year of the born yet we have 1,751 murders of the preborn, And the difference is, I think, because people do not look at abortion the same way. But if we pass this initiative, they will. And I think we'll see a major drop in abortions in the state of Idaho. Our guest is Scott Herndon. He's joining us from uh, Abolish Abortion Idaho. We've got, uh, we're coming up on 915, we've got 35 right now. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Is 2018 the year you're actually looking to put this on the ballot? That's exactly right. If we are successful getting the signatures, this would be on the November 2018 ballot, which I believe is November 6, 2018. And what's the cutoff date? When do you have to actually have the signatures? So our actual cutoff date is April 19th of 2018. So we have right out into 2018. So I guess we're looking at about 15 more months in order to get all those signatures. We figured the big period, of course, you can be circulating, and now we could probably get this done in a few months if everybody knew about it. But this summer at county fairs, parades, and things of that nature would be a great opportunity to have signature petition circulators out there getting signatures. Now, when you, when you we talk about this all across the country, there are efforts in various states to try and create a law that would end up, and the goal is to have it challenged at the Supreme Court in Washington, with the idea that judicial review could bring an end, uh, reverse Roe v. Wade. Is this potentially that law that could make that happen? <laughs> well, it would certainly bring about a clash at the courts, but believe it or not. I actually do not have much hope with the courts. I believe that 
based on state sovereignty and our right to defy or ignore courts, that this is really the path that we should be taking. See, I look at it this way. If the court of the United States, the Supreme Court, like it did in the Dred Scott decision of 1857, declares something completely abhorrent, or like Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896, basically where they said segregation is okay. When they do something that's completely wrong, and in the case of Roe v. Wade, they completely violate our state's right to protect human life. I mean, that's the unalienable, the inalienable right in the Declaration of Independence. It violates the Ninth Amendment, Tenth Amendment, the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. And I think that the state, the governor and the legislature have a duty, they have an obligation to actually defy the Supreme Court. And the state of Washington does that on... Oh, seems to be an issue this morning where we're losing, uh, we're dropping calls. I don't think it's on our end, but um, <laughs> got a little bit of that going on. Well, let me review with you quickly. We've got a couple of minutes before the break. Uh, Scott Herndon is with Abolish Abortion Idaho, and... His organization is looking to collect these signatures, but they need volunteers to actually pass the petitions, which would bring about a ban, at least bring this to an election, and then create a ban if we get a yes vote, and banning abortion in Idaho. And what you have to do, as he's recommended, is go to the website, and this is what it reads, abolishabortionid.com. That's abolishabortionid.com. And if you go there, abolishabortionid.com there's a printable version of the actual of the actual petition and so you can print that out you can print pages of that out start taking that around to various events or in your neighborhoods and get people's signatures but as he also pointed out you have to ensure you have to ensure that the people who signed this they put down their address that's required that address has to match with their voter registration record. Otherwise, during review, that signature will be thrown out. So this is the this is the step one. Go to the website abolishabortionid.com. Step two, print out the pages for the uh, for the petitions. Step three, start getting signatures. Step four, make sure those signatures actually have the address. Step five, that that address from the person signing that it matches their voter registration address. When they get a little over 56,000 of these, then they can get this on the ballot, not this year, but next year, and then it will be a simple up or down vote, a yes or no vote, that will actually bring this to a conclusion. Now we're going to try to get Scott back on the line if we can before uh, the next uh, segment of the program, uh, and got a couple more questions for him too about this. But in the meantime, short break is on the way. It's 37. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 20 after. And uh, just a quick note if you're hearing our program today, keep in mind if you're struggling with your hearing, you've got to give a call to Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology in Rupert. And she has a new hearing device which is available, which works with the brain to help those with hearing loss hear more naturally than previous aids. And of course, she's got a two week free trial that's taking place. Call Dr. Pickup today. Her telephone number, 312-0957. Mott Harrison Audiology and Rupert, 312-0957. You know, I'd be better served. A caller the other day referenced Eddie Albert and uh, Green Acres. I might be better served if I had Green Acres' telephone system in. You remember, they had to crawl up a high pole and talk from up at the top of it to, uh, to get a telephone call through. 922, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 35. One area that we didn't get into because you can expect that the uh, response is going to be just absolutely vicious from the uh, from the left on this particular situation. And I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to suggest that I saw a letter writer already in the Press Tribune out of Napa the other day uh, that is challenging. Uh, this petition drive, and I made a comment in the story on, online, and already the vicious attacks have started. Uh, I believe we may have Scott back uh, on the air with us. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, Scott, it's the second, it's probably on my end, it's the second time this morning I've had a phone drop out. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming it's, uh, it's, it's, it's probably here in this system uh, versus on your end. But 
quickly, you know, that was one area we didn't get into earlier. But before we talk about the reaction from the left, you were in the middle of a thought when we got cut off. And did you want to finish that? Well, I don't know where I got cut off, but I was talking about the whole idea that it should be our governor and our state legislature that, in essence, no matter what a court does, defend innocent life, regardless of whether the court says that that life can be taken. So our idea here is that the state governor and the legislature run the prisons and the police and the National Guard in Idaho, and they should go ahead and do what's right, regardless of what a court says. And the courts don't run police or prisons or National Guards. And so it's a simple matter of defiance or ignoring a court order contrary to preserving innocent life in the state of Idaho. And now I was saying, and I don't know if you got this on the air, that Washington and Colorado do that with the legalization of the recreational use of marijuana. Why can't sure. we do it for something righteous? It's nullification when you come right down to it. I mean, I guess by the old definition, it's just simply saying, you know, federal law isn't going to apply here. That's exactly right. And that, in fact, the federal courts have gone against federal law. The actual law is the Constitution of the United States. It says there can be no deprivation of life without due process of law. The the left is fighting back already. I was referencing a letter I saw in the Napa paper the other day, and uh the anger especially that I see exhibited, uh, it just it always strikes me that just the notion of that of protecting the life of a little baby uh, gets them so, uh, so, I mean, they're almost apoplectic about this. So once you actually start reaching, when you probably get to 45, 50,000 signatures and it looks like this is going to be a done deal, uh, you're likely going to see them bringing in some of the opposition from across the country, that is, uh, the heavy hitters to campaign against it. Uh, are you prepared for that? We have heavy hitters on our own side, but also I think the main thing that we have on our side is the truth, that human life is of value because it's made in the image of God, and so that's what we want to put out there to people. I just think that the people who criticize this, and I did see what you're talking about in the Nampa papers and elsewhere, they just happen to be a very loud, brainless, and senseless minority. And I say brainless because they just spout the things that the pro-abortion crowd has spouted. There's no critical thinking behind it. And I think the reason that we can prevail is because people, when they use their brains and use their logic, and we bring in the truth arguments, they can be persuaded. And then so you just end up with this loud minority. But I think the majority of Idaho could be persuaded to ban abortion in Idaho. And so we have people that are very capable of making that case when it comes down to the point where we have to argue for this for the general election. Randy Staples mentioned to me yesterday during the course of a discussion about this on air that he believes you were referencing that our government could get behind this and defend it. He said that we do likely have enough people in the legislature who would be willing to stand up and say that they will support this uh, and do whatever they can to make sure that this law stays on the books. Uh, do you get that feeling? I, I mean, I deal with people in politics a lot, and too often they're wetting a finger and seeing which way the wind is blowing. Um, but do you have that confidence? I do. There are people, we've talked to a number of state legislators, state senators and representatives who completely agree that abortion is murder. What is great about this initiative petition is that it puts into action what we say that we believed all along. And yes, they do wet their finger a little bit. They're not going to, unfortunately, they do consider re-election. Some of them don't. Some of them are willing to do the right thing regardless of how it affects their political careers. But the reality is the nice thing about an initiative petition is we are gathering the support of the voters that vote for them. And so when they have to stand up and defend it, they are going to know that there are 50% plus one of the Idaho voters who are going to back them up. And that's what it comes down to. We're not just going to vote for this. We are going to speak on their behalf. We're going to support them. And I think when they see that, then they're going to do the right thing. One more time on the website, just to remind people of what that address is and, and how they can go about downloading petitions. Yeah, that website is Abolish Abortion ID for Idaho, and you can even go to abolishabortionidaho.com, but it's abolishabortionid.com. The petition is there. It's a PDF document. It's got to be printed from that website because it has to be in a very particular format. 
all of the instructions are there for circulating right on that petition page where you download the PDF. You can just follow the instructions. When you fill out signature sheets, you have to get them notarized. So if you're circulating it, you get a bunch of your friends to sign it that are Idaho registered voters. Then you go before a notary and you attest that you witnessed them signing it, and you send it to our P.O. box in Hayden, Idaho, and we take care of the rest. By the way, the, you, you, when, you, when our phone call dropped and you emailed me your number on the other end, the email just came through. So if there's com- concerns that demons are out this morning... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not just telephones. Email is a little bit sluggish as well. And we're always facing those. I think that people uh, in modern times don't often understand that, but they still exist, and uh, they will do what they can to interfere with uh, with men doing the right thing. I've got to thank you for your time this morning, and uh, I suspect we'll be talking again soon uh, as the numbers start to move on this with a petition drive. Uh, and I really do wish you good luck. Thank you very much. We wish God's blessings on this whole effort. I think Amen. because it honors him, hopefully he will honor it. Super. Scott, thank you so much for your time today, and we'll talk soon. Okay, thanks, Bill. Take care. Scott Herndon joining us this morning, and he's with an organization called Abolish Abortion Idaho. And as he pointed out, what they're doing is they're gathering signatures, and what they need to do is get a little over 56,000 It'll go to a, a vote then, a public vote, November of 2018, and Idaho could take a stand for life that resonates all across the country, if not the world. We've got your telephone calls coming up in just a moment, some of your reaction as well.